welcome to How's Your E-Presence? This show is produced by E-Presence, and I am Mark Galvin, the founder and president of that firm. Welcome to the show where we talk about business and social media. We all know that we're trying to figure out every single day how to create some more return, how can we can find some little extra revenue that maybe we haven't identified before, and that's what we try to do here, give you some great tips on ways that you can do that. This show is brought to you by the social media firm ePresence. And that firm manages social media for individuals, for companies, and for collegiate students. We have a consulting section where if you need some help, someone to look over your social media, you give us a holler, we can help you out with that. So don't forget also, I always throw this out at the beginning of the show, we love questions. So if you wanna throw a question at me, you can hit me online anywhere. I have a universal social media handle, super easy to find me. E presents MG, E presents M for Mark, G for Galvin. You use that social media handle everywhere. You can find me, shoot me a question, and we will not only put your question on the air, but we will give you a, a shout out to uh, let folks know that you're there. Well, I'm very excited today. We have a, a super guest joining us today. His name is Dane Maxwell from Start From Zero. Dane, what's up? Hey, dude. So, um, so did you borrow that the name of your company from um, um, uh, an old '80s album, or or what? Definitely not. What? Oh, are you are you just wait a minute? I just think you called me old. Uh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so tell me about Start from Zero. What do you guys do? Well, I mean, so I live in sort of the metaphysical spiritual realm of entrepreneurship as well as like the human body realm of entrepreneurship if you will yep. which which means i i do believe i have a karmic responsibility to remove suffering from entrepreneurship remove the struggle from entrepreneurship and remove the struggle from success cuz success doesn't have to be such a big deal um, success should be a natural automatic birthright through just behaving automatically every day and and, you know, when, in order to do that, you got to do your personal work. You know, you need to sit and face your deepest fears in meditation. You know, you need to study and read, read the best books in your industry. You need to take risks and be vulnerable most every day. And these kinds of things really compound over time. Um, with the level of uh, personal work that I've done, I've been able to develop a sensitivity to feel things that I otherwise might not feel. Start from zero actually came from sort of the, let's call it an etheric realm, if you will, as an idea. And I chose that idea to steward into the world. It's no different. See, I was a musician for four years. I um, still play for fun. Um, but like, you know, when John Mayer, play? Uh, guitar, okay, guitar and like, yeah. And, um, and it's, it's just really, um, it's, it's a wild trip guitar because you, you, you can't, like you, you can see if someone doesn't put their work in with guitar. But you can actually get away with being sloppy in entrepreneurship, sort uh -huh. of, to, to, agree, yep. to a degree. But yep. anyway, like in terms of the, like when John Mayer wrote the song, Say What You Need to Say, which was that song from the bucket list, you know, say what you need to say, say what you need to say. And like they asked John how he wrote that song. And he said, you know, I w reached up and picked it out and channeled it down. Um, uh -huh. and, and so is some people do consider it weird, but to me, it's as, it's, I think it should be as normal and natural as breathing that, you know, certain ideas that are floating around the ether, you're like, you have an idea, you don't do anything with it. Then you see it existing in the world. You know, Elizabeth Gilbert, eat, pray, love author says that idea chose someone else because you didn't pick it. Start from zero for me is an idea that um, I, I saw and that I really wanted to steward as a vessel into the world to, to make entrepreneurship, a uh, a joyful experience for people. Um, so that's, that's where the name start from zero comes from. Interesting. So you're a coach. <laughs> you know what? We thought about this. <laughs> we did fight about this. And folks, uh, there's a video here. This is, we're doing this on a zoom channel. Yeah. And I did tell him, I said, I'm going to call you a coach. <laughs> yeah. And you know, the truth of the matter is I'm one, I, I'm a pretty, pretty, pretty good coach. Yeah, like, like people are like, you should yeah. do this. You should do this. You should do this. But the thing is I build technically proficient company. Like I build software as a service companies huh. and products. Yeah, yeah. And software as a service is, is the most lucrative business industry in the world. Um, factually speaking, the valuations sell for multiples of revenue. 
the customer lifetime value is a higher multiple than any other vertical yeah. that I know of. And um, the yep. products, if you build it and set it up right, you can work once and get paid forever. I've got a fully self-managed company with a CEO and the company pays me distributions every quarter. And I work zero hours in that business. Um, and then I went on and taught other entrepreneurs how to start businesses. And I've got like 15 millionaires under my belt now and growing. Some of them, some of my students are at the top of their respective fields. Now, wait a um, minute. How many companies have you started? You didn't well, start I mean, that I remember, man, and I, that I remember was 16. And, okay. And 11, 16 companies. Yeah. I mean, and Over it's, how long? I mean, it's not hard to start a company. I mean, you could have a website and a product. That's what I would, right. that's what I consider okay. a company. Yeah, that's true. I it's not it. like a building somewhere, but like 16 of them that I remember, like guitar video lessons or, you know, referral postcards for realtors or, you know, stuff like this. I could just try. Did you really referral postcards for realtors? You did do that? Yeah. So like, um, I was listening to an interview with two really smart marketers and they said the best time to ask for a referral is actually during the sale, not before or after. Cause the day that someone buys an iPhone, they're so jazzed about it. They show everyone, but a month later they're not showing anyone their iPhone. The highest time propensity, propensity of referral is during the sale. Right. So I concocted a seven postcard, seven week automate, fully automated solution where they put their name in, put their credit card in, put the name of their client in and credit card in as soon as they start working with them. And over the next seven weeks, it sends very thoughtful, playful cards that say, I hope I'm doing a really great job. Um, if, if you know anybody, give them this postcard Boom. Um, kind yeah. of thing. And, and um, it worked really well. And, but the problem was that realtors had to modify their behavior to be successful with the product. And, you know, Nordic track doesn't exist anymore because people don't have that behavior, but treadmills are still around. You know, right. we, so anyway, yeah, I did a bunch of different business ideas. So 16 businesses, you said 11 failed. Correct. They were all my own idea, by the way. Yeah. So, and so you gave up on 11 of them. They just weren't, they weren't producing the revenue that you were hoping. No, it was right? terrible. Yeah. Basically. Terrible. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you wrote a book, right? Um, so I tried to not write a book. <laughs> it, it came from the ether and landed on you and you had to write it. Depending on how yep. freaky you want to get. Oh, there's, yeah, let's get, let's get freaky. I mean, have you heard of the concept called numerology? No. Okay. No. So numerology is this like whole mathematical system of like, it's weird. Like, you know, I, I meet this, I meet a girl in my life and like some intuitive lady says, Oh, you're like the king and queen of heaven. That's what your makeup looks like in the divine realm. I'm like, okay, whatever. And then I go to a numerologist and I give them my date of birth and this girl's date of birth. And she writes down the date of birth and she looks at somehow the, somehow the dates of birth span out to, hey, this is the same um, date of birth combination as Jesus and Mary Magdalene. And I was like, that's the king. What? What is? I? And like, so I don't make it my, I don't make it my life to try to have opinions about things. I really try right. to make it my life to be open to all, all things. So I'm probably scaring people off, but if I'm not, that's cool. Numerologist, one of my friends went to the same numerologist and gave him, gave her my date of birth because he wanted to see what like our purpose of our male friendship was. You know, are yeah. we business partners? Are we like, what's, what's, what's the context for our connection? And um, this, the woman said, has he written a book? And um, he said, no. And she's like, it looks like he's going to write a book. Um, a year later from that, a book publisher reached out to me and asked if I'd write a book. Hmm. And um, I asked him like, how did you come to this idea? And he's like, well, people are really wanting a book on entrepreneurship. So I went online and I looked for top entrepreneurs I could find. And you seemed like you had a lot of credibility and results. So we're asking you to write a book. And I was like, okay. But I mean, cool. in terms of the synchronicity of that, there's like certain things like one of my, one of my old other colleagues, like, he was at a conference and the, like he just had to sit down and he was started like passing out and lights shut off and his, he had to close his eyes and he felt like he was dying. And then it's like a few minutes passed by and he kind of like came back too. And then within a half an hour, a friend texted him that one of his best kayaking friends had passed away and he was so connected to that friend that he felt oh. his passing. Sure. So these things that I'm talking about actually can create can like in terms of becoming unforgettable with social media how this all relates um, is that if you want to be remembered forever, like you're probably not going to forget the stuff I'm saying for one, but it doesn't mean right. you have to talk about this. But what, what it means is there are particular sensitivities that exist in every niche industry. 
sensitivities that people can feel but aren't being articulated or talked about. And if you want to think about being an expert in your industry, experts in industries can find patterns that are occurring in the industry and then talk about those patterns publicly. That's what makes them an expert. And so once you understand how expertise is created, you can actually go and do this, which is kind of what your podcast is about. You're right. finding patterns. So in terms of becoming unforgettable, and you do, if, like, let's say like this, this, is, this would make you like very innovative, very unforgettable, very thoughtful, and, and, and actually making people's lives better on social media. Because a lot of people come to social media with the intention to profit from it, to find some manipulation in some way. How do I get the most attention? How do I get the most comments? How do I get the most leads? How do I get the most sales? You come at it from that frame alone, you're already losing. Because there right. are other people that are way smarter than you. And Because so social media is, is it, what I've found is it, it, it's, about, um, it's about crafting and telling great stories that relate to people where they're at. It's about creating real connections with people. It's about creating discussion. It's not about being the smartest person in your feed so much as it is being the greatest facilitator of information. Oh, so like, spot on. so yeah, you, yeah, right. So you could, um, and I don't even use social media that much because I want to build systems that can reliably create my wealth and social media for me is not a system that I want to, to continue to manage. I like to build systems that rapidly create wealth for me, whether I show up or not. Social media requires me to show up, so I don't do it. But right. if I was showing up to social media, this is how I would apply it. And I would apply mm -hmm. it the same way. So like I, I, did, I made a post that was like, hey guys, on a scale of one to 10, how happy are you with your life? Honestly, 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 scale of one to 10, how happy? And if it's not a 10, what would it take to make it a 10? And then like, cause I was actually wanting to learn from people. So right. um, if you go onto social media with the intention to learn and you've really felt that in your body, I'm going on social to learn today about who's in my sphere and you create posts to spark discussions so you can learn from them and start connecting with people. That'll inform future posts. Um, That's a great, great to, point. To, 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 so, so, like, thank you. So like, to me is like, I have such an engine that's inside of me that wants to impress people. And I can't tell if it's like because I'm born Leo or what it is or if I, you know, it's the bullying that I grew up with or whatever, but there's a very strong engine that yearns for approval, wants approval, and knows how to craft and construct approval. Right. And there are then other parts of me that just want to be bright and shine because it feels really damn good to shine my light as bright as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I've been like kind of coming with this, but in terms of like shining a bright, light that comes from just a desire to feel good about fully expressing myself beyond the realm of approval well if i'm coming at a if i'm coming at social and it's in my unconscious that i want to be impressive i'm screwed and right. you could actually get away with being impressive pretty well like if you're really actually really impressive in certain ways people will be like wow that's really great you might get your few comments here and there but if you come on social with the intention to inspire humility and connect the the fastest growing companies that I see, um, so this isn't this isn't black and white, but to way to the way to grow a fast company is to tell stories of your customers' results. So if you want like just a, the basicest, most basicest, basicest template, uh, that's a, a a new word. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, like you would just take your top like um, well, nevertheless, the fundamental framework of a successful business is a clear customer a clear mechanism they're using to get a very clear result. You can break a business down to only that. And you've got like Dave Ramsey, one of the top guys in the world, clear customer, couple in debt, clear result. They want to be debt free, clear mechanism, the debt snowball. Now he's dominating the financial world because he's actually clear. You got weight watchers, women in their forties. The result is lose weight. The clear mechanism is counting points. If you get that clear on your business, you see that the three fundamentals, the soul or spine of a business is a very clear customer a very clear result and a very clear mechanism, then you know if it's about a very clear result, now you know why weight loss companies sell so many products showing before and after pictures because all they're showing are results. If you can do the equivalent of talking about the before and during and after of every customer you've had, here's what their life was like before, here's what their life was like during using my result, which is what a Tide commercial is showing when they're like, oh, dirty clothes, oh, Tide's so great, all clean clothes, before, during, after framework. When you use the before, during, after framework, you use that as a storytelling framework and you could do, if you have 30, 30 customers that have had a result with you and you say, this is 30 days of celebrating success, whatever it is, today, we're, today I'm gonna feature, feature it to you, Alan, 
Alan used to sell yachts on uh, yachts as a, as a yacht salesman. He talked to rich people all day, yearning to be them, wondering why he wasn't them, thinking he must be secretly different, thinking they must know something that he doesn't know. Then he realized that there were secret things he didn't know that he started installing and planting seeds in his brain. And now he owns a $15 million per year company. Mm. By the way, that's one of my students. He met Tony Robbins and all this and that. And is, is, is an incredible guy. But like, so like, that's a story that you could tell on social and that's a way to be very inspiring and, and also as a side note, it might sound really impressive, but um, if you have issues with like showing off or pride, like most of us do brag the crap out of your customers. Um, yeah, that's a good point. That but, is something to brag on. So yeah. Dane, I'm going to jump in here because yeah, normally by now I've done news. Oh, please. I want everybody to know yes. we're not going to do news. We're, we're oh, jump, we just, okay. we started off with Dane. We're rocking. Um, all of you that, typically are used to catching some news, catch the next podcast. We're going to talk about the coronavirus and social media, uh, but that'll be in the next podcast. So just for those of you that are used to our format. So Dane, I've got a question for you actually. If, yeah. If you, fire away. Okay. So in terms of like, like being legendary or unforgettable is like finding the subtle sensitivities that everybody can feel, but nobody's talking about. So you actually mentioned one before the recording, which is right. that most podcasters waste however many minutes of your time before they get to the point on the show. Right. Yeah, that's you, exactly right. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Like how you might turn that into a post? I'd love yeah, to hear. So yeah, there's, you know, there, one of the things that you have to do and, and you've, you really have talked about this. We have to pay attention to that, um, that inner voice because inner voice means something. And, and I listen to a lot of podcasts. I, I, uh, um, I have more podcasts on my on my phone than I, I care to admit. And for the record, I use the podcast call uh, po- podcast app called Overcast, the right. best podcast app out there. But that said, here's what's interesting that I found is that I am going to listen because I have a very short attention span. I'm going to listen for the first five minutes. If you don't have me, I'm gone. Right. I may skip past the intro stuff that everybody does. I may give you know give you a, a free pass there. So once that intro stuff is done, you got you got roughly eight minutes to catch my attention. In that period is when I like to share news. And and the reason is, is I divide our podcast into two parts. So I'm going to give you some news about social media, things that you need to know, things that you may find helpful right in the beginning. And then we pivot to our guests. And we do that so that those people that want news can get the news. And if they hang around, that's great. It's because my guest is speaking to them. Not every guest is going to connect with every single one of my audience members. And I'm okay with that. We do our best to find the, the very best guests that are out there. But I'm aware of, you know what, let's divide this into segments. And so we give a little bit to the audience that just wants news. And if you want to hear it all, hang out. There's, uh, there's something to learn. And, and we've had a lot of people come from a lot of different spaces. You are someone new because of how you're expressing what I call just being authentic. Hmm. Get on social media and be authentic. Be yourself. And I, I, come, at from, I come from the place of a, uh, I'm a trainer. I love, why do I do what I do? And you and I talked about this before. I, I love technology. I love to help people. I love to help them understand how they can do something a little better. I, my favorite job in the, of all time was back in the day when Hyatt hotels, they were rolling out their new computer system. I went to 33 different Hyatts and showed all these people how to use that system. Pretty, you know, boring technology, you know, monochrome screen, the whole bit. What I do now is I love to help. So I'm trying to live that space on social media. So if you go look at my LinkedIn feed, what do you see? You see videos where I'm saying, Hey, here's how you get more followers on your company page. This is what you do. And I do a video to show that I'm more interested in trying to help people because you know what, that's what people want. They want to ultimately inspiration, like what you're doing, you're helping. If I can help someone understand how to do something different on LinkedIn, they're going to find that interesting enough that they're going to continue to engage with me. Cause like, okay, good. Can I, can Check, I, I need that. Can I interrupt to ask you a question? Yes, sir. What kind of post would you post on social media about the subtle feeling of impatience you have with most podcasts? Like how, how would you, how would you communicate that on social? Subtle feeling and patience. Well, Tell you're listening more. to pot. You, so, you, so I'll give, I'll get, I'll tell you how I would do it. I'm just like, so like, like you're, you're he's a lawyer. He's asking me the question. Knows the answer. <laughs> well, no, I want to, I want to hear 
how you would yeah. how you would say it. Um, I I do somehow know some kind of an answer with the question though. But like so, yeah. um, what I'm trying to get at is, you want to talk about the stuff that everybody can feel, but nobody's talking about. Right. So a lot of people when they get on podcasts, they're wondering, is I'm going to waste my time? Um, mm -hmm. Is this going to be worth mm -hmm. my time? Am I actually going to feel anything from this? Am I actually going to learn anything from this? Is this going to be a worthwhile use of my time? I've only got so many minutes of my life on this planet. Do I want to give her this podcast? Right. How many times you said, I just lost 50 minutes of my time. I'll never get back. There. That yeah. is the first. Spot that is on. the first. Well, what you just said is the first question I would start with a post. Mm -hmm. That's how I would start the post on LinkedIn or Facebook, wherever it was. How many times have you just spent 50 minutes and wondered, like, what, how are you just asked this? Perfect. Right. And then you go in, you say, and like, so like in terms of like you say, like being authentic, I would, I would say, no, 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 no. Like, um, be honest, be honest, but like you want to have some like subtle agenda. Like you want to, like right. you, you want to be very clear on what your goal is. Right. Uh, absolutely. I think that's yeah. what you mean, but being authentic by itself, like, no, thank you. There can, well, there's some authenticity you just don't need to know, right? The authenticity is being, is, let me tell you what is not authentic. What is not authentic is to go out and to see an article from, from the Harvard Business Review that you have no opinion on, you just share it, and you don't say anything about it. What would, the authentic thing would be is to read something and say, this rocks. This is so good. This is something I really, really think that everyone should know. And you could go on to your feed, and this is a very professional way of approaching social media, but you see, you, you see this and you go onto your feed and you say, this piece is so great because of XYZ, and you must read this and take the time to read it because it taught me this. So you're, you're, you know, if you and I were sharing a cubicle in an office, I would, I would lean over and say, Dane, you got to read this thing. This is awesome. Right. Here's, this is authentic. You and I, before we started talking, we, before the show started, we were talking about uh, our favorite drink. I love bourbon. And I immediately thought, oh man, you got to, you got to know about this special uh, cocktail that I know of. And I sent it over to you. That's authentic. And that is, there's nothing wrong with that. You can certainly do that also on your social media. I just discovered a fantastic, um, a, a fantastic drink. You also have to be aware of who your audience is, mm -hmm. right? And that's the other thing. Being authentic, and I say, and I, and I mentioned this, is this is so important. Understand who your audience is. So I may be a raving lunatic and love a particular sports team, but it may not be worthwhile for me to go onto my social media and rave about my particular sports team because some of my audience isn't going to feel that same way. It comes back to feel. What we need to do is connect to the audience that you want to connect with in a way that is poignant to that audience. So maybe I've decided I don't care to do business with anyone who is in that space, right? Who likes that other team. Great. And talk about your team. You know, this would be great if I was selling jerseys for a particular uh, sports team. So yeah, you should be raving about that team. But it comes back to exactly where you started from. It's feel we are emotional beings. It's when I land on somebody's LinkedIn profile and I, I see your profile picture for the first time on LinkedIn, I am interacting with you. I don't, I, we don't think of this this way, but we're still human beings. I see a photograph. I am emotionally interacting with that picture. So I make a judgment whether I want to do business with someone based on the profile picture. And that is, that is the ugly truth. And there's a lot of ugliness that goes in with me seeing somebody's photo and me saying in my you know, in my, uh, my feelings, I don't want to, I don't want to do business with this person who knows why. Right. However, you still need to have that photo. It needs to be there. It needs to convey you in a way that is, uh, that's true. There's a, <laughs> there's, I swear to you, this cracks me up. Whenever I see a photograph of a woman with big hair, I know it's an old photo because nobody has big hair today. And so you need to have a current photo for that reason. I need to be able to catch your photo and say, yeah, this is someone that, yeah, they're current. Yeah, this, this looks like, you know, what I think they would look like. And yeah, I want to do business with them because they are approachable. Um, it is, it's hard though. And, and, and because some of it's uncomfortable and uh, the uncomfortable thing is we get on the social media and we see a lot of things we don't like. We see self-promotion that is just ugly, Right. So you could say to me on your social media, hey, you should call me because I can help you make a million dollars. Well, I'm not going to because I think you're full of it. That's too forward, 
right? Maybe you can help me make a million dollars, right? And chances are you can, but I'm not going to respond to that because I think you're full of it. Nobody, anyone that's going out on social media, call me because you, I can help you make a gazillion dollars. Okay, you know, that's just fantastic. I'm not going to respond to that. But touch me in the way you mentioned before, hit me in the, the feeling piece where you're asking a question where you're being honest in a way say, Hey, I, you know, this is a poll. I, you know, I'm trying to get a feel for the, what everybody thinks that's honest and you have to phrase it in the right way. It can't be a, it can't look like you're, it cannot look like you're baiting me. And that's also something people do on social media. No baiting. You don't need to have a baited question that looks like you're just begging for attention. It's got to be real. And that's hard. That is very, very hard. Um, and people have to have to work on that. It is, let's be honest though. Social media is a great way to stay in front of people. It's a great way to stay connected to people that are, that you're not in front of every single day. Uh, I just saw this stat yesterday. Uh, people spend 17 minutes a month on LinkedIn, the average user. Okay. So in those 17 minutes is Dane Maxwell showing up on somebody's social media feed that he may want to do business with to find right, whatever that means to be doing business. So to me, it's absolutely fascinating. And there is a, there's an emotional piece to it and you're spot on. You're a musician. Do you write music that doesn't, or do you like music? I don't know the depth of, uh, of if you're still writing or not, but do you like to write music that isn't going to evoke any emotion? Rarely, very, very, very. Right? Yeah. And, and why? Right? What's the answer to that? It's because nobody cares <laughs> if it's not emotional. What's your favorite, uh, name, name your favorite band. Oh, favorite band? Uh, yeah. Musician? Um, Ooh. I, I don't, no one's really coming like, no one's really, like, I love, I love the energy that Avicii does. Okay. Oh yeah. Really, so, really like what he does in his music. So that is it's an emotional. pure transmission of a feeling. Yeah. Yeah. It, pure, it, it just, pure feeling. Yeah. And so that is so important in, in, to connect in social media. So if you're going to be in that space, you've got to figure out, and you're almost, you are a musician, right? You're trying to figure out how you can, how you can evoke that emotion. Um, yeah, deliver a feeling. Yeah. I, I think that that's, that's just brilliant. So tell me this, you've started a lot of companies, 16 businesses. Where is, if, if you were going to sit down and you do this all the time, so this is probably easy for you. What do you sit down to and tell that entrepreneur? You, I made this mistake. Don't do this. What is the one thing you could circle? Um, so in that book that I wrote, um, I start off the book with something called three little rocks. Put these three rocks in your pocket before you go on these. The book is made up of seven different learning adventures. And so you need these three rocks in your pocket before you go on the seven adventures. So the, the first adventure is the three little rocks. Your first stop. The, the first rock is the most fundamental rule, or the, sorry, the second rock. The second rock is the most fundamental rule of wildly successful entrepreneurship. Yeah. Um, and that fundamental rule that you cannot break very well, if at all, is we do not get to decide what works. So I start the journey with that. So every time I've tried to decide what worked, it's been humiliating. And when I actually listen to what works, like, um, like if I could ask you, I say, so um, Mark, what is the most important activity in your business on a day-to-day -day basis right now? Most important activity is connecting with people. Face-to-face -face connections. What does that mean exactly? What do you so, do that? so what I do is I'm, I join, I have a number of uh, networking groups that I'm a member of. And, and I work through those networking groups to meet and develop gate opener relationships so that a digital marketer remembers I'm here and says, hey, yeah, yeah, I don't, we don't do social media, call, call Mark Galvin. Your most important activity is in consistently building new connections to build your network to draw on when you need it. Right. 
That's okay. a better way of putting it. Much, much more eloquent. I'm glad I'm recording this. I'm going to write <laughs> that down. <laughs> well, it, it, you can reverse the rules. It's, it's, you know, what's most important to us can be quite difficult to be clear about. Um, right. So, um, if I were to um, make posts on social, or send emails, or send you a letter, or run an ad that I was trying to put in front of you, and it said something along the lines of um, the secrets to, um, connect, growing your network based on connections or, um, a systematic way to build face-to-face relationships and connections. Um, or, um, you tell me actually what title would have your full attention. What, what, what could something say that you're like, dude, I got to read that. What would it be? Two things, build systematic connections and save time. So, I can save you time, so you you know because it because it's a it's it takes a lot of time to meet people to develop those relationships. If you could save me the time and still develop all those connections, bravo, that so, would be worthwhile. So, um, I don't get to decide that that's what you're into. I don't get right. to decide what works. Yeah. So what I do is I ask you what's most important to you. And I listen, and then I deliver that to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and since I was doing kind of a, I was like, I don't know if I'm hitting this on the head. I was like systematic this and this. Like, you know, you, and so I was like, you tell me what would be irresistible for you to see. And then you just told me, and so I came up with my content. Um, when so you, that's that's the second rock. Yeah, you do not get to decide what works. Yeah, and you know, it's sort of like that's that's. That's delivering a product that your audience really wants, right? Yep. At the end of the day, it's what we're that's what we're talking about. It's what and, they're thinking about all the time. It's what they're like. Oh my yeah. god! Like it, it's like, like if a, if a really beautiful woman walks by or a really beautiful man walks by, and it triggers an attraction response in you. It's a powerful, powerful feeling when you, right. like you get an attraction triggered. That's not intellectual, right? And so it's it's at that level that it hits. Like, you, like you tell me, like if I, a systematic way to build connections that saves you time so you can spend more time face to face, um, okay. without gimmicks and hype and BS and sounding sleazy. Right. And that's the big thing, right? I'll, that, I'll get, does that hit you? I'll, yeah. So if I'll get about, and this will, and I'm talking to people out there right now, you're listening to this. You're like, Oh, I can provide that. You're going to hit me on social and I'm going to ignore you. <laughs> I get all these direct messages. Why? on, on Why LinkedIn. you ignore because it's not genuine and I, I don't believe them. Right. And that would make the, it genuine. That's a good question. Uh, and I don't, I don't have an answer for that. Would it be this? Hey Mark, I heard you express your desire for a systematic uh, way to create connections that um, save time. I'm not sure if I have the best solution, but I'd be willing to experiment with you until we found something that works. Would you like to give it a shot? Hmm, that's not bad. What would you do? That's not bad at all. The, you could, and I don't know that I would respond to that, okay. right? I, I can't, I really can't answer that. Or here, yeah, that sounds great. The best way is, is that someone is contacting me and they say, and, and well, they, they go to you and they say, hey, Dane, when you connect me to Mark and you say, Mark, you need to talk to this person. Hmm. That is so important. And that's connections, uh, you know, validate other connections. It is ex- a very important. A cold connection is hard. And that's where there needs to be some, you know, there needs to be some longevity so to watch, our relationship. Watch this now. So you come to a website and it says cold connections are hard to make. On, on, on average, they take X percent, X times, X steps, more many touches to turn into a meaningful relationship. On the other hand, that'd be eight. A, maybe eight <laughs> over <laughs> 40 days. Right. On the other hand, doing warm connections happens in an instant. Welcome to a systematic way to introduce yourself to new people based on warm connections without being sleazy, without being da-da, without being da-da. Now we have a new program product system that we could sell. Yeah, that's good. And try out. But it's, it's using your words by listening to you because I don't get to decide what works. But that you're listening for that ping. And like when you said cold contacts are really hard, boom. That's what's in everyone's Good head. Part. Yeah. Like, like when you said, 
when you said, when you look at a picture, you decide if you want to work with them or not. I'm like, oh, I've totally done that, but I have not been aware that I've done that. That's been something I felt that nobody's talking about. Right. And that made me learn something from when you shared that. I was like, wow. And now I started appreciating you even more for sharing that. And it was like, well, this is something I really learned from Mark. And, and he explained something that I feel that no one's really ever talked about. Right. Um, and so, I mean, you start doing this stuff. And so the way that you get really good at this is to do this stuff that most people don't do, which is to build metacognition through meditation. And I don't do a very good job at that, but that's like where you sit yeah. down and you're like, I want to get out of here. You would label that feeling. Then you're quiet. Then you feel your neck tense. And so you just label that sensing. Then it's quiet. Then you'd feel I feel pleasure and I would label that feeling. And this metacognition is actually a skill that's built. It's a, it's a metacognitive skill. It's thoughts thinking, th it's thoughts that see thoughts. It's like, it's a, it's a way to meta to see your cognition, see your thoughts from a meta perspective. You build that, you will start to see the things that most people aren't able to see because they haven't built that metacognition. Um, now in the, in, what's that? <clears throat> that's fascinating. Yeah, it's, it's a way to go, man. Yeah. Um, and we are the center. I am the center of my own reality. We are all the center of our own reality. We are only and always ever experiencing our own mind. I think that you're making me feel a certain yeah. way. Right. But actually, I'm experiencing my own mind. I'm not. Right. There's nothing to do. So like we're only. So if you think you're getting away with something, so like you're fooling someone or you're getting, no, you're, you're only fooling yourself. We mm -hmm. are only always experiencing our own mind. What that means, we want to develop a great relationship with our own mind, which is extremely difficult. Um, very, very difficult. Like sit down to meditate and most of us will crawl out of our skin. The secret then is actually to hold crawling out of your skin while you sit. So you sit down and you're like crawling out of skin. You go feeling and you don't move. And um, like, I don't want to meditate. I don't want to meditate. So then you sit down and actually hold the desire that you don't want to meditate while you're meditating, but you actually hold it. And then you start to see that you can hold all these experiences and then you start building this metacognitive layer that starts to notice all these things that no one else notices. Then you become unforgettable. Then you can talk about things. So like when you talk about that picture thing that everybody looks at, that's an excellent example. Um, and in the book, the second rock, um, the first rock is to make sure that you build equity every single day that you're alive. Um, and if you build equity every single day for the, while you're alive, if you say you build equity every single day for the next 10 years, ownership in something, which means you have an asset producing income for you when you stop working. If you yep. build equity every single day in something, whether it's, you know, you've got a blog post that will be read for 10 years to come. You've got a podcast that you make money from in some way. You've got a book you've launched. You've got a product. You've done something that builds equity. Um, that is an asset you can, that produces cash for you. You want to build equity every single day. Imagine doing equity, building equity every single day for 10 years. That's mm -hmm. how the rich get richer is they're always right. building equity. Um, my friends and I, we build equity every day and you can join us by learning how to think this way. The third rock then is how do we handle jealousy? Um, cause jealousy is so common in business, but I don't see it often talked about. Here's a good example. Right. It's a feeling that a lot, like a lot of us will look at businesses with anger or envy or jealousy. No one, nobody's really talking about that. So mm -hmm. that's the third rock is how do you handle jealousy with open hearted curiosity for me? Like say I'd be jealous of, or I have been, but I've done the work on it. Jealous of say Tim Ferriss, the author of the four hour work week. Like I thought I, I felt jealous. And then what I did is I asked, um, what do I admire about Tim? What do I secretly admire about him? I'm like, Oh, he doesn't have like, he lives more fearless than I do. I, I, um, I let my fear stop me more than Tim. Oh, jealousy starts to, click off. So, um, if you're in a state of jealousy, it can, for me, like I, like I, I, I built $2 million businesses and then I plateaued and I crashed because my self-esteem couldn't handle the success I built. My mm -hmm. self image crashed. So I went down into a, a lull for a while. Um, and I've, I'm just now coming to grips with how gifted I am. And I think mm -hmm. we should all come to grips with how gifted we are. And I think we should all be able to openly talk about our gifts and appreciate our own gifts. Right. Um, and, and, um, so, you know, like I wrote down on I, during this podcast, I was like, you know what, I'm going to start giving myself permission to be brilliant. I want to give myself permission to be brilliant. 
And when I do that, I get a part of my psyche that wants to attack me right away. Stop, shut up, Dane. Don't, nope, nope, nope. And right. I have the metacognition to see that and not identify it and, and actually stop. I can see that's thoughts going on and I'm still going to decide permission to be brilliant. And where do I pick that up? I pick that up likely in many places, one of which is sitting down in meditation, feeling something that seems like I don't want to do it, holding that I don't want to do it while I do it. And then you get into like things like procrastination, like you know you struggle with procrastination. You can actually hold the experience of procrastination while you're doing it. You don't actually have to fight it. Um, so, man, brilliant. The, so these these three rocks in this whole book actually it walks you through the structure of how to become a profitable entrepreneur in your thinking. So you won't be dependent on Shopify, you won't be dependent on like Amazon, you won't be dependent on LinkedIn, you won't be dependent on Facebook. At the fundamental core of your heart, you'll be a profitable creator. And it, it gives you the identity work, the self-image work to support that, obviously, because I struggle with this, it was a very big part of the book. And then it's got these things called the four brains. And when you build these four brains, most entrepreneurs don't even have all four. But when you build all four of these brains, you start prop, you just profitably create in like in an automatic way. And then after you get the four brains, it maps through seven different skills, like how to start thinking like an owner instead of trying to be an expert. Very big, important distinctions. And then when you go through that, it goes through 15 different examples of employees who all transitioned and transformed from employee to entrepreneur in four years time. These guys are all now owning their own business. They're no longer employees. In addition to these employee profile, employee to entrepreneur profile, it shows the customer, the pain, they're, the, part, the pain they're solving, the solution they created, the offer they made. It shows a 26 factor analysis of their personality. So you can see underneath the hood of what makes this person tick so you can't get caught in like judgment or comparison and thinking they're better than you or you're better than them. You actually know what, what's underneath the hood of these successful entrepreneurs. The book is this gift to humanity, this enabler of entrepreneurship so that entrepreneurship is a source of pleasure and joy and success and not this struggle to make it every day because it, it I would really like to make making extraordinary amounts of money very ordinary and I'd right. also really like I'd to love make, that thanks and I, I'd also really like to make being successful not such a big deal like yeah. like like we like imagine how many more gifts you can give to the world if you can actually be automatically successful if you will like it's like if you're not waking up to struggle every day I think working from joy is the next great frontier. Like, like um, last thing I can say on this in terms of like, like if you look at Arnold Schwarzenegger's muscle tone, um, his muscle tone when he was a bodybuilder was gorgeous. And when you look at when he worked out, he was smiling and he was happy when he worked out. He wasn't, it didn't look to me, and I don't think he was working out from a place of lack or incompleteness or like there was a hole. Most people go into the gym to fix a hold. I don't like my tricep. I got to my tricep. It's not unhappy with my tricep. I'm unhappy with my tricep. I'm unhappy with my tricep. I'll be happy with my tricep when. And um, you can actually see it show up in the muscle definition of the body of someone who works out from a place of lack, uh, survival and like un unhappiness and someone who works out from joy. And the thing that about joy is that unconditional joy, joy without any external condition is a real happiness. Happiness for no damn reason at all it makes you a really powerful person. Um, hmm. And when you can actually learn how to access that place. And so I think that working and living from joy will be the next great frontier of, build, of, of, of life and humanity. Um, so you're you know, you're talking, and ironically, you're talking about something that I am, that's a, a subject of a book that I'm in the middle of reading and it's called The Big Leap. Have you heard about this book, The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks? Yeah, you know, I actually hit an upper limit while I was reading, so I stopped. <laughs> So you're familiar with that. Oh, yeah. And it is, there's a limiting piece to it. And you kind of suggest that, you know, allow yourself to be successful, allow yourself to recognize those things. And, and I'm in, I read about three books at a time and cool. I don't know that I ever finished one of them. Um, but, um, but that I, I was the first time I've kind of heard that we do limit ourselves in some way. And I thought that was a, I thought that was an interesting concept. Well, I, I hate to do this. You know, I, I'm enjoying this conversation so much. We are way over time, but I think that the, everything that you've shared today, Dane, is, is um, well, pretty darn cool. And, Thank and I, you. I think it's worth letting our audience hear more and more of this. Tell everyone that wants more, how can they find you online and, and, uh, or on uh, social media? Man, I mean, I would say if you're listening to this and you're open to it, like put your hand on your heart. Um, and, and like take a moment to connect with your heart and um, like realize the beauty of your heart 
like wanting a better life or wanting more. Like, I think the greatest gift we could ever receive is the gift of our own heart. Like the greatest gift, not our kids, which are huge gifts. I have a child, not our partner, which is an amazing, like our greatest gift is our own heart. Yeah. Um, and like, and so first just, just do that. And like, um, in terms of like connecting, like I'd love to hear from you. We all deserve to have great lives and we all deserve freedom. We all deserve freedom as a birthright. And, um, if the insidiousness of our culture has conditioned us to think otherwise, then we should really transcend that with love, not to prove anything or anyone wrong, but to demonstrate love. Um, the, you can get a, the, go to startfromzero.com to see everything that we're doing, but also uh, uh, I'd like to give people a free book excerpt to see if they want to read that book. Check out a book excerpt. You can do that at startfromzero.com forward slash e presence. And that'll be a special URL just for your listeners. There's no email Rock capture. On. There's no gimmicky email capture to get the to get the excerpt. Um, just just check out the excerpt. If if it if it speaks to you, please pick up the book. Like the book's like a love letter to business, and it's it's designed to inspire the most scared hearts. Um, and it it can reboot if your current business, like you at the beginning of the podcast, you said. We help liking people. We, we like helping people find new sources of revenue. I was like, that is like one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> and um, start from zero is a framework to rapidly add revenue to your life. Bravo. Um, so that is startfromzero.com forward slash E presence. Yes, sir. And you've got a book tease there. And, and <laughs> if someone likes it, woo, it's tease. If someone likes it, they can, <laughs> they can get a, get the book straight from there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's, cool. It, it's, it's, uh, it's a, it's a tease. Yes, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> was was a better word than tease? You know, I, I kind of like tease, right? That That's a, you were talking about, you know, a good looking person walking by and you, you know, you're looking like, okay, that's a response. I think that there'd be a response. You pop in there and take a look at the book. Uh, that's a good thing. I, like I mean, that. I'd say my intention with that book was that the section given would be complete in and of itself. And if you liked it, you'd want more. Um, there was actually no intention that I can track that was wanting to, I could be full of cold crap. Maybe I was trying to tease people. Um, <laughs> you, you just, you decide after you, you look at the extra right. feel, see if you tell me if you feel teased. <laughs> leave that, leave that. That's up to us. And a yeah. tease isn't bad, right? I don't think that's. Thank a, that's you. A okay. Bad. Thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, Dane, thank you for being with us today. I, I truly appreciate it. What a great conversation. And I think that there's, and I would consider this a, a bit of a tease. You, you gave a little bit of info on, on ways that folks can make themselves better at business in a way that's not just, hey, you know, make sure that you are investing here or investing that. It's, it, there's more of a deeper investment here. And I like that. That's a, I think that's very valuable. So for everyone out there, thank you for joining us here on How's Your Represence. We broadcast live. Remember this. We broadcast live on the third Thursday of each month, 3 o'clock on Business Radio X. You can go to the Gwinnett Studio and catch that live show, or we're on all the social media channels, excuse me, all of the podcast channels, including your Amazon Echo. Dane, this is funny. I, I like to get news out of my Amazon Echo, and I can't tell you how many times I've sent a note over to ESPN. They, I think they have an intern that's driving that, that channel. Somebody was just talking in the background. They didn't actually drop their, uh, what they were supposed to. So that's the fun thing about Amazon Echo. You get, you get the raw thing. But uh, check it out. You can find us there. Um, if you would like more about ePresence, you can find us at ePresence.me. ePresence.me because it's all about you. And we are really interested in trying to help you succeed. Or our social media handles, just like our website, ePresenceME. We just drop the dot. Well, Dane, thank you so much for the time. I do appreciate you joining us. Um, I am Mark Galvin, and this has been How's Your ePresence? We'll talk to all of you soon.